Brandon gasped and stared at his parents in horror. How could they do this to him? But I don't need a babysitter. Brandon whined, hoping, praying that this time they'd listen to him. I'm not a little baby. I can take care of myself. With a sigh of exasperation, Brandon's mom looked at his dad, who was shaking his head. Look Brandon, his mom told him, trying to keep her patience, I told you before. You're only 10 years old and we're not going to leave you home alone. Maybe when you get older. But mom. Brandon whined. No buts. His dad added, almost good-naturedly, you're too young to be left home alone and that's that. Brandon grumbled silently to himself but said nothing, knowing very well that there was no use in arguing any further. They'd had the same discussion every couple weeks when his mom and dad went out, and every time it ended the same way. In fact, his protesting had been more as a matter of principle than from any hope of winning. But Brandon knew that it wouldn't hurt to try. Since there was no further point in sticking around, Brandon turned and left his parents, going outside to where he'd left his bicycle. Brandon knew that there was still several hours before his sitter showed up so he had plenty of time to go for a bike ride. After all, riding his bike around the block, which was as far as he was allowed to go, always gave him a feeling of independence and made him feel better. When Brandon had made it to the end of the block, he smiled to himself, suddenly feeling daring. He glanced back over his shoulder to make sure that his parents weren't watching, then he continued going straight, knowing full well that he wasn't allowed to go that far but loving the thrill. Brandon laughed as he made it to the end of the second block of houses, then finally turned there, knowing that it was a very minor victory over his parents but one that he enjoyed anyway. As Brandon was going around the corner, he noticed something lying on the sidewalk just ahead of him. Pulling to a stop, Brandon bent over, wondering what it was. He grinned, remembering all the things that he'd found before while riding his bike around. Like the screwdrivers, a knife one time and the $5 bill that he'd found just the week before. Who knew what he'd find this time? Once Brandon had bent over and got a good look at the thing on the sidewalk, he saw that it was some kind of metal necklace. He frowned slightly as he picked it up, seeing that it had some sort of picture on the front of it that looked sort of like an angel though he couldn't tell for sure. The necklace was all dirty and certainly didn't look expensive, but that didn't stop Brandon from grinning at his new treasure. Cool. And with that, Brandon stuffed the necklace into his jacket pocket, then continued on his bike ride. Brandon scowled as he examined his parents. His dad was dressed up nicely, and so was his mom. She was wearing high heels and a fancy dress, just like she usually did when they went out on a date. The smell of her perfume tickled Brandon's nose, though he had to admit that it did smell sort of nice. However, what annoyed Brandon wasn't the way his parents were dressed, but that they were busy giving instructions to his babysitter. The 15-year-old girl who was going to be Brandon's babysitter was Beth Higgins. She had shoulder-length reddish-brown hair and was kind of pretty, though that didn't particularly matter much to Brandon. What did matter was that she was going to be watching over him, and he didn't like that at all. She wasn't anywhere near as bad as some of his previous babysitters, but she was still real bossy. Brandon guessed that it was a requirement for being a babysitter or something. Then Brandon's mom interrupted his thoughts with, Well, honey, what do you think? She gestured down at herself, smiling happily. Smiling back, Brandon gave her a thumbs up, honestly answering, You look pretty. Just pretty? His dad broke in with mock surprise. Then turning to Brandon's mom he continued, I'm afraid that we're going to have to get his eyes checked. And with that he gave her a kiss on the cheek while she giggled. A moment later his mom said now be good Brandon. We'll see you in the morning. Bye. And with that Brandon watched his parents leave through the front door. Beth turned to Brandon and grinned, I guess it's just us now kiddo. Then she rubbed Brandon's hair as she walked past him, making him grimace. He hated when she did that. It always made him feel like he was a dog or something. Then with a shrug, Brandon followed Beth into the living room and watched while she picked up the telephone to call one of her friends. He sighed, knowing the ritual and deciding that for the time being it would be a lot better to play in his bedroom. After all, as long as he was messing with his Pokemon cards in his room, Beth couldn't yell at him to be quiet. 
In his room, Brandon immediately pulled out his Pokemon cards and started going through them. He smiled as he stared at the Pikachu one, wondering what the next episode of the cartoon was going to be about. He'd seen all of them so far. It was his favorite show. When Brandon had gone through all of his cards twice, he sat down on his bed, beginning to get bored and wondering what he could do next. In spite of the fact that he had plenty of toys and games in his room, none of them interested him. At least at the moment. Slowly he began to feel almost claustrophobic, sitting there and being bored. After a little while Brandon snorted unhappily, climbed off his bed and left his bedroom, muttering why should I have to stay in there? It's my house. He grinned to himself, glad that his parents hadn't sent him over to Beth's house to be watched like they frequently did. There was even less to do over there, though her 13-year-old brother Mike was pretty cool to Brandon sometimes. At least he was whenever he was in the mood. Brandon went back into the living room, barely giving a glance at Beth who was still on the phone, blowing bubbles with her gum at the same time. He shrugged as he plopped himself down on the couch and turned the TV on, wondering just what there was to watch. After Brandon had been flipping through the channels for a minute, he found something that was at least interesting, and turned the volume up just a little so that he could hear it better. Almost immediately Beth yelled from across the room, Turn that down pipsqueak, I'm on the phone. You're always on the phone. Brandon called back. Why don't you glue it to your head? Be quiet. Beth snapped back. Then turning back to the phone, she continued, Yeah, it's that annoying little brat I'm babysitting. At least I'm getting paid $7 an hour. Brandon just shook his head and went back to the TV, absently wondering to himself what Dennis the Menace would do in a situation like that. Eventually though Beth hung up the phone, then announced, Common kiddo, I guess it's about time to eat. Brandon just groaned while Beth went to the kitchen to throw the leftovers his mom had left into the microwave. A minute later she called get your butt in here if you want to eat. All right. Brandon groaned. As soon as he was in the kitchen and saw what his mom had left him, he groaned again, even louder. Not meatloaf, again. He stuck his tongue out, much to Beth's amusement. Well, she said, if you don't like it, too bad. Beth grinned then left Brandon to eat. When Brandon had finished eating, he returned to the living room to see that Beth was watching TV, though she had several of her school books set out in front of her on the coffee table to study at the same time. He watched her for a moment, then thought that maybe they could have some fun. Wanna play Pokemon with me? He asked her. I've got lots of good cards. Beth snorted, why would I want to play a stupid kid's game like that? I mean, get real. She gave Brandon a look of disgust, then went back to her homework. But it's really fun to play. Brandon tried again. Looking annoyed, Beth snapped, I told you, no way. Now get away from me you brat so I can study. Brandon sighed, feeling somewhat disappointed but not too surprised. Though Beth was sometimes willing to play board games with him, it wasn't very often, and she'd never seemed at all interested in Pokemon, though Brandon couldn't figure out why. Then just as Brandon was about to go back to his room, Beth suddenly said, Oh yeah, your mom said that you had to take a bath tonight, so get going. But I don't want to take a bath right now. Brandon firmly told her, crossing his arms across his chest to show her just how serious he was. However, Beth didn't seem impressed. Beth got up off the couch and walked over to Brandon. She stood over him with her hands on her hips, looking down at him threateningly. I told you to go take a bath. Now get going, or else. Brandon grimaced, tempted to tell her no then to run to his room and lock the door. But then he remembered that she'd tell his mom and dad when they got back, and then he'd be in real trouble. He knew that she'd do it too. Then sighing, Brandon gave up and started towards the bathroom, hating the smug look on Beth's face. While Brandon was undressing in the bathroom, he pulled out the necklace he'd found earlier from his pocket, smiling when he remembered that he still had it. I bet this is worth a fortune. He told himself, carefully washing it off in the sink then leaving it on the counter so that he could take his bath. I bet I'm going to be rich now. He grinned, then returned to his bath. After Brandon was soaking comfortably in the hot water, he took a deep breath, 
then went under the surface to see how long he could hold his breath. Coming back up, he gasped for breath and wiped the water from his eyes when he noticed the bathroom door opening up. Beth stuck her head in, saying don't make a mess in here, all right. I don't want to clean up a lot of water off the floor. Brandon just choked, then scrambled to cover himself up. Get out of here, he gasped out, blushing furiously. Go away. Beth just smirked. Don't worry kiddo, you don't have anything worth looking at anyway. She laughed at that, making Brandon blush even more. But she still stayed and stared at Brandon for another moment, just to make him even more embarrassed, before finally leaving. Once Brandon was finally sure that Beth was gone, he slowly let his heartbeat slow down to normal. Bitch. He mumbled, remembering the word his dad had once used to describe a neighbor woman. Quickly finishing up with his bath, Brandon climbed and dried himself off, realizing as he did so that he'd forgotten and left his underwear and pajamas in his bedroom. Brandon shrugged, then wrapped his towel around his waist. He'd be pretty embarrassed if Beth were to see him, but at least he'd be able to get to his bedroom all right. Then grabbing the necklace off of the counter, Brandon admired it for a moment before putting it on, then he threw his clothes into the hamper and went back to his room. It didn't take Brandon long to get dressed in his pajamas, though he didn't bother to take off the necklace. He decided that he sort of liked wearing it. At least for the moment. Brandon grinned and held it out to look at again before dropping it against his chest. Then with a grin on his face he went back to the living room. The first thing Brandon noticed when he got back into the living room was that Beth was on the phone again, though this time she also had a school book sitting out in front of her, even if she didn't seem to be paying too much attention to it. The phone and the bubble she was blowing with her gum seemed to take most of her attention. Brandon just shrugged, then changed the channel on the TV to see if there was something on. Almost immediately Beth snapped, Hey, turn that back. I was watching that. Brandon frowned, no you weren't. You were talking on the phone and looking at your book. Don't talk back to me. Beth growled, now change that back. Why? Brandon dared her, knowing that since she was still on the phone she wasn't likely to do much. Beth didn't bother to put down the phone, she just stood up and glared at Brandon, then announced, because I'm bigger than you pipsqueak, and I'm the one doing the babysitting here. Now change it back. Brandon grumbled to himself, but did as Beth demanded. He frowned as he stared at the stupid show that was on, listening while Beth told whoever was on the phone, yeah, the little brat is acting up again. You know you kids are. When Beth finally got off the phone, she looked over at Brandon, saying it's about time for you to start getting ready for bed. With a quick glance at the clock, Brandon protested, but it's not my bedtime yet. Look kiddo. Beth said as she walked over to the couch, I'm the one babysitting, and if I say it's your bedtime, then it's your bedtime. Got it? Brandon just glared at her, not bothering to answer. He knew that there were ways to extend his bedtime, though some of them were likely to get him in trouble with his parents. Then Beth looked at Brandon again and asked what's that, while pointing at the necklace. This? Brandon said, holding it up, I found it. Isn't it cool? Beth snorted but came over and bent down for a better look at it. Picking it up in her hand, she stared at the necklace for a moment then snorted again, looks like junk to me. With that she turned around and went back to her seat, blowing a bubble with her gum as she sat down. Where'd you get it? A gumball machine? Brandon just shrugged, absently scratching at his chest. A minute later, Beth said, go brush your teeth and get ready for bed but it's not my bedtime yet. Brandon told her again, standing up and trying to look firm, I've still got almost an hour. Then Beth glared at him, standing up herself and putting her hands on her hips. I'm the one in charge her, so go do what I tell you to. She stared at Brandon for a moment, seeing that though he looked intimidated he still didn't seem quite ready, then added, if you don't get ready for bed right now, I'm going to tell your parents and make sure that you get in a lot of trouble. She looked smug at that. All right. Brandon reluctantly agreed, his bottom already feeling sore just from thinking about what would happen if she did that. It's not fair, he grumbled aloud. I wish I was the one babysitting. Beth started laughing. Yeah right kiddo. 
I wish I could see that. Then Beth smirked, adding, now get going twerp, before I have to hurt you. Brandon's eyes widened at the threat, then he turned and ran to the bathroom, hearing Beth's laughter behind him. That's not fair, he grumbled to himself as he got his toothbrush ready. However, he knew that there was nothing that he could do about it, having already learned that life often isn't fair for kids. As Brandon was brushing his teeth, he looked into the mirror and frowned. He wasn't sure exactly what it was, but something wasn't quite right. For one thing, he realized that his pajamas were beginning to feel rather tight, though there was something else as well. Something that he just couldn't put his finger on. For several minutes Brandon just stared at himself in the mirror, startled to see that his pajamas were getting tighter and tighter on him. They were even beginning to pinch him some. Brandon's eyes went wide as he saw that his sleeve was pulled back several inches on his wrist, and the legs of his pajamas were up several inches higher as well. He looked at his stomach, which was now becoming noticeable since his pajamas had a several inch gap between the tops and bottoms, when just a short while ago the top went over the bottoms. What's going on? Brandon finally asked himself, beginning to get scared, but excited at the same time. He glanced back into the mirror and noticed several more things. His hair wasn't the right color. Instead of the dark brown that he was used to, it was now a sort of reddish brown, and longer too. But his hair wasn't the only thing about his face that was changing. In fact, he barely recognized the reflection as his own. Suddenly Brandon heard a loud scream coming from the living room. Beth? He yelled out, beginning to get worried. Gulping nervously, Brandon hurried to see why she was screaming. As soon as Brandon was in the living room, he stopped and stared at Beth with his mouth open. Oh my god. She was crying, grabbing frantically at her chest. What the hell's happening to me? Brandon just stared at her. It was immediately obvious that whatever was changing him was changing her at the same time. The first thing that he noticed was that her clothes were loose. That she looked shorter. Her hair had turned darker and looked shorter as well. Her chest didn't stick out as much as it normally did, and Brandon was almost sure that he could see the two bumps in her shirt growing smaller as he watched. Just then Brandon winced in discomfort, reminded at just how tight his pajamas had gotten on him. They were pulled tight on him, and beginning to come loose at the seams. He glanced at the slight bumps on his chest, but didn't think anything of them as he struggled to get his pajamas off, no longer caring if Beth saw him. He just had to get out of his jammies. Brandon? He heard Beth say, though it didn't really sound like her. You, you. Brandon turned and saw the way she was staring at him, fidgeting in her own now oversized clothes. Then he turned away as he finished tearing off his pajamas and even his underwear. Oh my god Brandon, Beth was saying, sounding almost hysterical, your folks are going to kill me. Looking back at Beth, Brandon was startled to realize that he was now taller than she was. And more than that, she still seemed to be shrinking, while he still seemed to be growing. But more than that, when Brandon looked at her he could almost swear that he was looking at a little boy. She looked almost like a little boy, even having a boy's haircut. Just like his. Then it dawned on him that she looked a lot like he did. Then glancing down at himself, Brandon noticed the two bumps on his chest. They were bigger. His chest was beginning to push out, much to his amazement. He even noticed that his nipples were getting bigger. It was with a shocked amazement that Brandon looked over his body, seeing that his pee, pee hadn't grown like the rest of him, and even seemed to be getting smaller. He was also started to realize that he had hair around his crotch, which he'd never had before. Holy shit. Beth gasped out, sounding scared. You look like me. Brandon just stood there, staring at himself with awe. His body was still changing, but not quite as much as before. It seemed to be slowing down. Nervously he ran a hand over his chest, then stared at his crotch again. His privates were very small now, almost gone. And as he watched, they continued to shrink and pull inside his body. Then finally the changes stopped. Brandon looked at his legs, amazed at how long they seemed. His butt felt big and his hips seemed big too. He looked at his slender waist, then at the two limps on his chest. 
Bringing his hands into view, Brandon's eyes widened as he saw that even they looked completely different. He had long fingernails even. Gulping, Brandon looked back at Beth, whose clothes no longer fit her in the least. He didn't even recognize her when he looked at her. At least not as his babysitter. Instead, she looked just like one of the kids that he went to school with. And more specifically, she looked just like his reflection in the mirror. She was shifting between staring at herself in disbelief and at Brandon, shock clearly visible on her face. Finally Brandon gasped and said the first thing that came to mind. Cool. For several moments, Brandon just stared at himself in disbelief, then beginning to grin, he hurried back to the bathroom. When Brandon looked into the mirror, he saw Beth looking back. He had the exact same hair, the exact same face, and he noticed, even the same holes in the ears where she wore her earrings. Brandon stared at his reflection, then smiled at himself. This is so cool. He smiled even more as he noticed that his voice had changed as well. Still grinning, he looked into the mirror and experimentally said hi. I'm Beth Higgins. Then he started giggling. When Brandon had finished in the bathroom, he returned to the living room where the real Beth was still in shock, saying this can't be happening. This can't be happening. But when she looked up and saw Brandon, her eyes went wide and she started crying. Wow. Brandon whispered to himself, still staring at Beth. He'd never seen her cry before so this was a bit of a surprise, even if she did look like him. After a couple minutes Beth stopped crying and wiped the tears from her eyes. Brandon just looked at her for a moment more, then broke out laughing. What's so funny? Beth demanded, sounding just like a little boy. Sounding just like Brandon. She put her hands on her hips and glared at him, which only made her look even funnier to Brandon. You're, you're. Brandon tried saying between the laughing, then pointing at her face he said, your makeup looks funny. He giggled again, staring at the apparent little boy in the oversized girl's clothes, who had makeup kicked all over his face, and smeared from the tears. He even noticed that Beth's fingernails were still covered with nail polish, though it didn't look anywhere near as good as normal. What? Beth asked, looking up at Brandon, obviously both scared and confused. Then she tore her eyes away from Brandon and tried to hurry to the bathroom, tripping badly over her own clothes as she did so. Brandon followed behind Beth, laughing at the way she wasn't even able to walk in her clothes anymore, until he remembered that he wasn't even wearing any. He felt a little embarrassed about that, but shrugged it off. This was all too interesting for him to waste it being embarrassed. However, Beth obviously didn't think so. Instead, she was staring at herself in the bathroom mirror with a look of disbelief. My makeup. She whispered, I look horrible. Brandon grinned, trying not to laugh. It may have been true, but it was the last thing he would have expected her to say. She turned and glared at Brandon, though she didn't look intimidating in the least. Finally, she snapped, hand me that washcloth. When Beth had finally gotten all of the makeup cleaned off, including the crested up polish on her nails, she looked a little more pleased. Brandon guessed that maybe trying to do something normal like taking care of her appearance was helping her to keep from panicking. Finally Beth turned back to Brandon, looking a little calmer though not by too much. This can't be happening. She muttered under her breath again, then to Brandon she said what could have done this to us? Brandon shrugged. Curious but not desperately so. Not like Beth seemed to be. He just wanted to have fun with it while he could. Then Beth's eyes went wide as she noticed the necklace that Brandon was still wearing. Oh my god. She gasped. That has to be it. What? Brandon stepped back when Beth reached for his necklace, not letting her touch it. He eyed her skeptically, asking, What do you mean? Beth tried reaching for the medallion again, but Brandon pulled it away from her, taking great delight in the frustrated look on her face. This happened after you made that wish. Beth finally gasped out. Then going pale, she muttered, and I made one too. She gulped, then nervously explained, maybe it's that necklace you're wearing. Maybe that granted the wish. Then she looked pleadingly at Brandon and begged, please wish us back to normal. Brandon just looked at curiously for a moment, then shrugged. It wouldn't hurt to try, and he grinned to himself, 
thinking that it might be really neat if he really had a necklace that would grant wishes. Then another thought occurred to him. What if it only gives three wishes? That would be cool, he thought, but decided to risk it. Grasping the necklace tight, Brandon said aloud, I wish we were back to normal. Beth looked hopeful, though not for too long. After several minutes it became obvious that nothing was happening. Beth tried thinking of something else, then asked, maybe it only gives one wish to a person. She looked up at Brandon thoughtfully, then demanded let me try it. For a moment Brandon just glared at her, annoyed that she was still trying to boss him around, but then he shrugged, deciding that it couldn't hurt. Reluctantly he took off the necklace and handed it to Beth. She looked at it hopefully, muttered a short prayer, then put the necklace on herself. I wish we were back to normal. She said aloud, then quickly added, but that I was the prettiest and most popular girl in school. Again they waited for several minutes, but there was still no sign of anything changing. Brandon frowned, wondering how they could get turned back to normal but not quite worrying about it yet. Then looking down at Beth, he told her, give it back. No. She said, it still might work. I want it back. Brandon whined, it's mine. Too bad. Beth snorted. At that, Brandon glared at her, then grinned as he realized that he was the bigger one now. I said give it to me. He demanded, then reached over and grabbed the necklace. Beth tried fighting with him, but Brandon was bigger and took the necklace away from her, putting it back on himself and giving her a smug look before walking away. Beth hurried after Brandon, then jumped in front of him. You can't keep walking around naked while you look like me. Put something on. She reached down and struggled with her own oversized clothes, obviously uncomfortable. Brandon grinned at Beth and said, I don't think any of my clothes will fit me. Then looking down at himself, he poked a finger against his breasts and giggled. Don't do that. Beth ordered, looking almost as if she were pouting, which made Brandon giggle even more. Stop laughing at me. You can't tell me what to do anymore. Brandon said firmly, absently putting his hands on his hips as he did so. I'm bigger than you are now, so there. He stuck out his tongue, loving the shocked look on Beth's face. But. Beth protested. Then grinning to himself, Brandon said no buts. He started laughing at the look on Beth's face. His old one. After a moment, Brandon got serious, remembering what Beth had told him earlier. She was right, he couldn't keep going around naked. But as soon as he looked at her, and her clothes which didn't fit at all, he grinned even more. I know where to get clothes that will fit. Where? Beth asked, then her eyes went wide when she saw where Brandon was looking. Oh no. She started to protest, backing up as she did so. However, as soon as she tripped over her own drooping pants and fell onto the floor, she knew that Brandon was right. A short while later, Beth was standing there, dressed in Brandon's discarded pajamas, and not at all happy about it. Brandon however was having a more difficult time getting into her clothes. She smiled as he struggled to get into her pants. She'd always liked wearing tight jeans since they drove the guys wild, and she was almost looking forward to watching him try the bra. However when Brandon started to put on her shirt, leaving the bra on the floor, Beth gasped you can't do that. You have to wear a bra. Says who? He asked, partly curious and partly trying to keep Beth from bossing him around again. Beth let out an exasperated sigh, about to tell him to just do it, but remembering that he was bigger than her now, she decided to humor him. Because girls, anyone with. She blushed for a moment, trying to think of how to explain it. Boobs? Brandon supplied with a grin, poking at his own once again. Um, yeah. Beth frowned. Well, anyone with those has to wear a bra. It's sort of required. Brandon looked at her suspiciously for a moment, then he gave a nod and picked up the bra, frowning as he did so. Since he obviously didn't know what to do with it, Beth sighed and went to show him how it was done. When Brandon was finally finished dressing, Beth stood back and gulped. My God, she whispered, you look just like me but without the makeup. Brandon looked down at himself, feeling somewhat confused. 
On one hand he wasn't sure that he liked dressing in girls' clothing, but on the other hand he was excited. This was the most interesting thing that had ever happened to him in his life. He grinned at Beth's comment, then on a sudden urge he said show me how to put the makeup on. Beth looked at him oddly for a moment, but then nodded faintly. It didn't take too long for Beth to put makeup on Brandon, just like what she'd had on earlier. She'd even put the same pink nail polish on his nails that she had earlier, though Brandon wasn't sure that he really liked that. Now for my earrings. Beth muttered before going to look for them. She found them on the floor in the living room where they'd both apparently fallen out during her transformation. After the earrings were in, Brandon went back to the bathroom for another look at himself. In spite of knowing exactly what he'd see, he still gasped in surprise to see his babysitter looking back. He now looked more like Beth than before. Brandon stared at himself for several more minutes, making faces at himself as he did so. Then he left the bathroom with a smile on his face. This was definitely exciting. Going back into the living room, Brandon saw Beth sitting on the couch, watching TV and looking very uncomfortable. He grinned slightly as he noticed the way she was leaning back with her feet stretched out onto the coffee table, doing the same thing that he frequently got yelled at for. Unable to resist the opportunity, Brandon put his hands on his hips and snapped out, get your feet off of there. Beth's feet immediately dropped, and she looked at him in embarrassment. Brandon wanted to laugh, but managed to keep from doing so. Instead, he gave her his most serious look, which apparently worked since she gulped and looked very uncomfortable. Feeling rather smug, Brandon picked up the remote control and changed the channel, only to have Beth say, change that back, right now. Brandon froze, beginning to get annoyed. Who did she think she was? Don't tell me what to do. He said quietly, I'm bigger than you now. He growled a little louder, you can't boss me around anymore. You're not in charge anymore. I am. Then he put his hands back on his hips, feeling angry but trying to control it. Looking straight at Beth, he saw that she was scared, but he didn't care. You're not the one baby sitting anymore. I am. He glared at her for a moment, sure that his point was understood. Beth got up, obviously scared but trying to hide it. You can't talk to me like that. She said in her new little boy's voice. In spite of how we look, I'm still older than you and I'm still your babysitter. For a moment, Brandon just stared at her, then without even thinking about it he rushed over, grabbing Beth by the shoulder before she could get away. She yelled out for him to let her go, but Brandon didn't. Instead, he just turned her around and swatted her firmly on her rear. Brandon spanked her several more times, his mind clearly remembering how she'd spanked him before. Now it was his turn. The apparent boy in Brandon's hands squirmed and cried, though Brandon still continued the spanking. Finally he asked, are you going to behave? Beth looked at him in wide-eyed terror, but as soon as Brandon raised his hand she quickly nodded agreement. Good, he said, letting her go. Then feeling a little more satisfied, Brandon sat down on the couch while Beth rubbed at her sore bottom. While Brandon was watching TV, he glanced over and noticed Beth's purse. After she'd put her makeup back in it, she'd left it on the coffee table. Brandon smiled faintly to himself, then after glancing over at Beth who was sitting on the other end of the couch pouting, he picked it up and started looking through it. As soon as he noticed the pack of gum, Brandon helped himself to a piece. During the next 10 minutes, Brandon watched the TV, while at the same time absently blowing bubbles with his gum and popping them. He normally didn't chew gum very much, but it felt sort of comforting for him now. He shrugged at that, paying attention to the show that was on instead. However Brandon soon began to get bored with it, though he normally enjoyed that show. After glancing over at Beth, who surprisingly seemed more interested in the show than he was, Brandon was tempted to tell her that it was time for bed, just to see her reaction. But then he had a better idea. Brandon got up and went to his room, and when he came back he held out his Pokemon cards announcing, I'm going to teach you how to play Pokemon. It's a fun game. But I don't want to play no stupid game. Beth protested again, but after a glare from Brandon she gulped and followed him over to the table where he was setting up the cards. 
Beth was a quick learner and soon grew more interested and excited about playing the game. And as happy as Brandon was to finally have someone to play his favorite game with, he just couldn't get into it as much as normal. As the card game went on, it was beginning to seem almost boring. Almost, childish, though that didn't stop him from playing as he was still having some fun. Just not as much as usual. Eventually Beth looked up, and with tears threatening to come out of her eyes again, she hesitantly asked, Do you think we'll ever get back to normal? She gulped, then added, I mean, we should be looking for whatever made this happen. Beth gestured down at herself. Brandon frowned, feeling a little sorry for Beth, though not too much. He just couldn't bring himself to be as worried about it as she obviously was. I don't know. Brandon assured her gently, about to say more. Then they saw some headlights coming in through the window. Coming in front the direction of the driveway. Jumping to his feet, Brandon rushed to the window and looked out, gasping mom and dad are home. He turned and looked at Beth, suddenly afraid of what they might do if they found out. Beth paled, then whispered oh no. What are we going to tell them? I don't think that they'll believe I'm really Beth. She was about to panic and was starting to cry again. Brandon took a deep breath then told her, You'll have to sleep in my room and pretend to me. And you'll have to go to bed now before they come in and see you up. Why? She demanded cautiously. Shrugging, Brandon answered, Because they'll spank you and ground you. Oh. Beth whispered. She then asked, But we've got to try to get back to normal. We can look tomorrow. Brandon promised her, not planning on looking too hard. Though he wouldn't mind getting back to normal, he just wasn't in a very big hurry. He was still having too much fun. The sound of a car door slamming outside suddenly reminded them of the urgency. Get going. Brandon snapped, gently shoving Beth in the direction of his room. She gave him one look back, but hurried over there. Night night, kiddo. He called after her with a grin, then blew a bubble with his gum and turned towards the front door. A moment later the door opened up and Brandon's parents both came in. They were both smiling, looking very happy. What a great night. Brandon's mom said dreamily, I can't wait to do it again. Neither can I honey. Brandon's dad said, bending over and kissing Brandon's mom. Brandon just smiled faintly, half afraid that they were going to recognize him immediately. He gulped but asked, did you have fun? They quickly assured him that they had a great time, then Brandon's dad reached for his wallet. Let's see, he said as he started pulling out money, I believe that this should cover it. There's even a few dollars extra. He smiled and handed Brandon a bunch of money while Brandon just stared at it in amazement. Wow, Brandon whispered, thinking about how much money he was just given. This was more than a month's allowance for him, and it was only for one night of babysitting. Brandon grinned to himself, deciding that babysitting wasn't anywhere near as stupid a job as he'd once thought. So how was Brandon? His mom asked him. Um. Brandon gulped, then continued, oh he was real good. He gave a smile, and we had some fun. Good, good. His dad said quietly, his mind obviously on other things. Then he turned to Brandon and said, Well, thank you, Beth. I guess you probably want to get home yourself. Brandon's eyes widened at that, realizing that he certainly couldn't stay there. Not if he now looked like Beth. He had to go to her house and sleep in her bedroom. The idea both excited him and made him nervous at the same time. Yeah, I guess. Brandon answered reluctantly. Then giving a forced smile, Brandon went over and picked up Beth's purse and started back towards the door. I'll see you later. Bye, Beth. His parents both said as he left the house. As soon as Brandon was outside, he stopped and took a deep breath of the night air. It was well past his bedtime and he certainly wasn't used to being out that late. It made him a little scared, but also made him excited. Just like everything else seemed to be doing. Since Beth's house was just down the street, Brandon knew that he didn't have very far to go and that he'd be home in just a few minutes. Shrugging, he shifted the purse on his shoulder and started walking. While he was walking, several thoughts started to occur to Brandon. What if he never did get back to normal? 
What if he was stuck as Beth for the rest of his life? Those thoughts made him a little scared, but he knew that things would work out all right. They just had to. Besides, being stuck as a girl, even as Beth, wouldn't be too bad. After all, he had already been having some fun, and he knew that there was a lot more he could have as well. As Brandon thought about it, he realized that Mike would be his brother now. His little brother. He started laughing at that. He'd always wanted a brother, though he never thought that he'd get one like this. And at least he knew that Mike was pretty cool. They'd probably even have some fun together, even if Beth did sometimes complain about him. The more Brandon thought about it, the more he decided that he liked the idea of having a brother. Then Brandon realized that if he was going to be Beth, then he'd have all of her friends and have to go to her school and classes. Neither of these things would be easy he knew. Not at all. Though he knew most of Beth's friends, he didn't know how she spent time with them. How she played with them. Nor did he have any idea of what he'd have to do at her school. Once again Brandon started to get scared, but then reminded himself that all girls kept diaries. Everybody knew that. All he had to do was find Beth's and read it. He grinned in anticipation, deciding that whatever he couldn't get from there he could always as Beth. After all, she'd be just down the street a little way. Yeah. He muttered aloud, that might work. Smiling to himself, Brandon reached down and picked up the necklace that was still around his neck. As he stared at it, he frowned and pulled it off for a better look. For some reason the necklace just didn't look quite as exciting and interesting as before. Instead of looking like the treasure he seemed to remember finding, it looked like nothing more than cheap junk now. He didn't understand that since it hadn't really changed, but he couldn't deny that cheap junk is exactly what it looked like. Brandon rolled the necklace over in his hand, remembering that Beth had thought it was what made them change. He stared at it for a moment, then started laughing. That's silly, he said, remembering that he'd started to feel funny even before they'd made their wishes. No, he decided that the necklace didn't have anything to do with it. That maybe God had just played a joke on them instead. He smiled at that idea, laughing at the thought that a necklace could grant wishes. This is just junk, Brandon said aloud, looking disgusted at the necklace. Then with a shrug he dropped it into a garbage can that was set out for trash pickup in the morning. I don't know why I even bothered picking that up. As Brandon continued down the street, he blew another bubble with his gum and smiled to himself. Being Beth wasn't going to be easy, but he knew that it would definitely be interesting. And best of all, he wouldn't ever have to have a babysitter again. In fact, Brandon was excited to realize that he could be the babysitter. He could even babysit Beth now. That thought made Brandon start laughing aloud. Walking to the door of his new home, Brandon grinned, that is like, so cool. He laughed again, barely able to wait until the next time his parents went out. After all, it was almost guaranteed that they'd call Beth to be a babysitter. That they'd call him. I can't wait, he said, eager to start his new job babysitting.